here in Brazil right now in Sao Paulo. Myself, Mr. Stevie Rochelle from Hell, and Todd Chason from Tough. And uh, we're stoked. We're very excited to be here in Sao Paulo. It's a, uh, it's it's a good thing to go to uh, not only another country but a whole other part of the world, another continent. And and we had great fans uh, at the Inferno Club. The show was great. We had people that came from Rio, all different parts of, uh, you know, the Sao Paulo districts and uh, other parts beyond people told us oh I traveled three hours and and we we couldn't be more thankful and appreciative to all our Brazilian fans and people from South America that came to the show last night. Yeah it was fantastic and uh, even moreover uh, thanks to the guys that played with us in our band uh, Caio, Julio and Sean, Sean. and uh, thanks to uh, Joseph and Joey at the club for and, bringing us and out Leandro and, 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 uh, and all our friends yeah. and uh, Ricardo from uh, Roadie Crew Magazine and Vettigiano for driving us around and Carlos from Animal Records and, and uh, Myra Diaz Gomez everybody that helped Gasolina Films everybody thank you saw some things the first time I was here that you know I'd never seen before like I've seen homeless people but I'd never seen a homeless person you know that was five years old and uh, that was quite shocking to me so thankfully we didn't run into them this time and uh, you know hopefully they're all being looked after and, and uh, it's all good it's not so much that it's new material in the sense that um, uh, this year is a 20-year anniversary for our debut record, What Comes Around Goes Around. And uh, Stevie had the idea to uh, re-release some of the songs and call it What Comes Around Goes Around Again. So what we've done is we've taken a handful of our favorite tracks off the, off the debut CD, uh, maybe another ha small handful of songs that didn't make it onto the CD, including the title track, What Comes Around Goes Around, and um, maybe gave them a, a modern facelift. So re-recorded them to where they are, um, they're a little fresher. Um, and then we have special guest guitar players playing guitar solos, maybe some special singers coming in to sing with us. Yeah, we figured there was, you know, a, a way to pay tribute to, you know, not only our band that we did this record 20 years ago, um, and it, it's uh, it's something that we thought would be a cool idea. A lot of people have said, you know, oh, I remember hearing an old demo of, uh, you know, a song like Put Out or Get Out, or asking about, you know, stuff from the old days that we really haven't played in a long time. And so there's a couple of songs that we uh, we kind of like looked back at and, and decided to re-record them. You know, uh, "Put Out or Get Out" is one of them. And uh, like Todd had said, "What Comes Around Goes Around" was actually a song that we used to play in the set. And um, and at one point it became the title of the record, but the song didn't actually make the record. Right. So this time we're going to actually record the song "What Comes Around Goes Around," and that has a special guest guitarist, Jeff Loomis. Uh, who at one point had played in Sanctuary and Nevermore. Um, Steve Brown from Trickster is actually playing a guitar solo on the record. Uh, Kerry Kelly, who has played with Alice Cooper and uh, Rat and a few other bands, he's playing a song on the record. And so we uh, not only have done this project, you know, to kind of celebrate it, but we've brought in a, a basically a collage of cool guitar players that we've been friends with and worked with over the years and had them uh, guest on it. Yeah, and there's a couple more that we're, we're not saying yet. That, uh, that, that Secret. Made, you know, secrets. So, Ancient so, Chinese secret. Ancient Chinese secret. When Tough was getting big, uh, we were a lot younger, 20 years younger, and uh, things were a lot different. I, you know, I'm, I'm a little more mature now, a little more relaxed. Uh, I still <laughs> drink too much, but, uh, um, you know, there was always a lot of uh, pressure and uh, the record labels, the politics, so there was always some, you know, maybe some arguing. So uh, I left Tough to go to a different kind of a band, something that, uh, that was close to me, which was a heavier band where I sang and I played the bass and it was really more geared towards musicians, uh, a musician's musician's band. I did that, we did two records uh, on European labels, toured the world, it was very great, it's one of my most special things. Uh, a couple of years ago, Stevie asked if I would uh, come back and do the show. I think it was Mexico was the first show, right? Yeah, no, did a I mean, warm up show or something like that. But and you know what? What I was saying is like you know at that point we had kind of you know evolved a little. Uh, Todd had already been playing and you know since he formed the band for five, six, going into seven years, and we just kind of at one point the band was becoming a little. I don't want to say we grew apart, but you know we we kind of just changed. We had different outlooks, and he he was becoming much more 
interested and influenced by uh, heavier stuff. Pantera. Pantera, Metallica, Slayer, uh, you know, typo negative, just stuff that was a little heavier, a little darker and, and tough for me and, and George at the time and even Michael was still, you know, a, a pop rock band or a hard rock band and is, as much as tough it evolved into being a harder band um, from record number one to record number two and from 1987 to 92, Todd's idea of heavy was just at another level. He, wa he wanted to do, you know, like people in Brazil would, you know, enjoy Sepultura. Yeah. I mean, his band was playing with pissing razors and, you know, very aggressive aggro, like, Cannibal you know, and, uh, stuff, yeah. and so that's what he did for, you know, 10 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, then at one point, you know, we had, you know, talked about some things and I said, hey, well, I'm doing shows once in a while. Maybe you want to come and, you know, and the first few times I asked him, he said, no, no, <laughs> no, you know, but, you know, now in the last few years, he said, yeah, let's do it. So we're having a good time. And here we are in Brazil. Having the best time. I think that without trying to make it heavier, just because I I have a my voice has changed, I sing heavier, uh, I have a, a heavier bass tone. I think that that kind of automatically lends itself to maybe being heavier. We're not intentionally going after trying to make tough like Metallica. That's not what tough's all about. Tough is tough is still a hard rock band, but not a, not a hardcore metal band. Um, the new recordings will have some elements of that, some flavors that you know that we kind of said, all right, well, what happens if we took this song from uh, from 20 years ago and we put some double kicks in there and uh, maybe dropped the tuning down a full step to see how how that would work out? And it's really coming out great. I don't think it's such a departure from the original version. No, nobody's going to listen to it and think it's Cannibal Corpse or Sepultura. Yeah. It's still without a doubt tough, but. You know, it's like listening to Skid Row's first record or listening to Skid Row's second record with Monkey Business and Slave to the Grind. There's just a little bit more punch to it, you yeah. know? My life has a whole bunch of projects, you know. Uh, Metal Sludge is a Two big little projects. A, a big deal. I spend a lot of energy on Metal Sludge on online metalsludge.tv. Um, I've put out a couple solo records, um, a couple of fun records with you know some other characters, doing some uh, you know some sports team stuff. The Green Bay Packers band I have called CWA. But for the most part, you know, Tough is, is a band that I spend uh, a lot of energy on. And I've, I've kind of taken some time away from it because I became a father, I have children, uh, and also spend a lot of time managing the band Veins of Jenna from Sweden. But I've uh, tried to focus and put a little bit more energy into Tough again since it's, it's still relevant. People still like the band and, and we couldn't be happier to have, you know, succeeded in having another chance to come to South America and uh, you know playing around the Midwest we just did Chicago Milwaukee Minneapolis we still do shows on the East or I should say on the West Coast we're trying to sort some tours to get to the East Coast and maybe Texas and um, hopefully in a year we'll be right back here in Brazil Los Angeles uh, they have a, a music festival coming up in two weeks the Sunset Strip Music Festival with Motley Crue and uh, a whole bunch of bands uh, an up-and-coming band that's making a big a big splash in the United States right now is called Black Veil Brides, uh, managed by Blasco from the Ozzy Band. Uh, they're making a big impact. And, um, you know, the Sunset Strip still has rock and roll. There's still rock and roll in the United States. People enjoy it. But it's just not like it is or was in 1987 or 88 or 89. It's, it's you know, it's a different, it's a different decade. It's a different millennium century, you know. It's 2011. So, um, there's a lot of festivals that happen in the States um, and other parts, um, Rocklahoma, um, the Southwest Texas Rock Fest, um, there's M3, which is on the East Coast, I think in Baltimore. And these festivals have had everybody from Poison and Motley Crue to Tesla Cinderella and going down, you know, the ladder, Kicks, Bang Tango, Bullet Boys, Pretty Boy Floyd. And, and so there's still music that's alive, but it's just not exactly the way it was in the 80s. And some people that are so, so in love with the 80s, and so in love with what Motley Crue did or Poison did, because it's not just the norm and the, the, the chart-busting multi-platinum records that it used to be, they get depressed and they get angry or they get let down and they're upset. 
it's like, hey, there's rock and roll everywhere, and you just got to go find it and make it happen. Stevie's involved in Metal Sludge. I uh, I play in a lot of different other bands, uh, cover bands, all whatever it takes to make the money. For me, it's only about playing music at this point. If I you know if I have to get a day job, I would. But right now, music is helping pay the bills, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like Todd just said, you know, I mean, if somebody like Bon Jovi, Motley Crue, Poison, they've had a, a great deal of success, and they can release. Uh, group records, greatest hits records, uh, books, biographies, you know, and, and bands uh, who have had, you know, a smaller amount of success just have to figure it out and make it happen, you know. Life's rough and you got to go through it, you know. So Indeed. it's all good.